Hello and welcome back to She Is The Moment podcast. My name's Shona, I'm a life first business coach and in today's episode I'm going to be talking about mistakes that you might be making with your niche that are sucking the joy out of your job faster than your grand's Henry Hoover and what you can do to fix it. But first, if you're watching this on YouTube, you will notice that I have a little accessory on that gives you a little clue as to where I have just been. I have a pair of Minnie Mouse ears on and I can't take them off. I am just back from Disneyland and I have been wearing them ever since. I got back on Thursday night, it's now Saturday afternoon and I just want to say that I am a full convert to the Disney lifestyle. I was one of those people that was, you know, I'm not going to lie, quite sceptical. It's quite sceptical. I maybe like secretly had a little chuckle about people who were like Disney obsessed. One of my really, really close friends is a Disney adult. If you don't know what a Disney adult is, that is someone who is obsessed with Disney and they don't have any kids and they just love Disney, right? So she is like a walking, talking Disney princess. She is so sweet and wonderful and lovely. Her whole body is covered in Disney tattoos. Her and her husband go to Disney every year. I think it's really cute. But now that I have been to Disney myself, I'm like, how have I not, how have I not been here sooner? The place is the most joyful place that you will ever be. Like as soon as I walked into that park, as soon as I took a step in and I looked around and I could smell the smells and the weather was gorgeous, the sky was perfectly blue and there's just wonderful joyful music and everyone's happy and smiling and there's Disney princesses walking about it is really hard not to just get swept up in the joy of it all and the combination of being in that really happy environment and going on some roller coasters because of course I'm I love adrenaline I'm an adrenaline junkie I went on loads of roller coasters and the weather it has absolutely reset my brain chemistry and now I am feeling like 100% more positive than I was before I left. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but it is really dark in Glasgow. The weather has been absolutely shocking. It's like now we get about three hours of daylight per day and it's just only going to get worse. And I was feeling the sad effects. I don't know if, it, if any of you get seasonal affective disorder. I absolutely get it. But I've been to Disney and I feel like it's cured me. I just loved it. It's really, really expensive. I will say that, but it is worth every single penny. And I could see myself going, going again within six months. Like I just loved it so, so much. I'm really surprised to say that. And you know who was just as cynical as me? Paul. But within half an hour, he was also wearing his ears. So there you go. And you do absolutely get swept up in it. Like it's just so magical and beautiful and everyone's really happy and yeah 10 out of 10 Disney vibes highly recommend let's move on to freedom win of the week and it's a bloody good one I don't know if it was the last episode or the episode before but I told you that a girl inside the liberation lounge Rosie was telling me that she was very close to handing in her notice. She just needed another couple of clients. She has a full-time job working in the police and she really wants to be an online coach or a full-time fitness professional. And she just needed a couple more clients in order to fully move to online. And she sent me a message to say that she has handed in her notice. Let's all do a collective cheer for Rosie. Honestly, it is the best feeling ever. And I just think that it's such a power move to be like, bye guys, it's been wonderful. I've loved it. Maybe I haven't loved it, but I'm going to tell you I've loved it. But now I'm on to start my own business and I'm going to go away and live a completely freedom-filled, flexible lifestyle that works around my life. Now, I imagine that working shifts in the police isn't completely conducive to having kids. I know Rosie has kids, 
And so I imagine that now she will be able to completely be in control of her schedule. Oh, it's going to be amazing. She's going to love it. And can I tell you a little story about the last time I was employed? So I've been self-employed since I was 22 years old. I'm now almost 36. My last job was the job that I had throughout university. So when I was a student at Glasgow Uni, I studied theatre. <laughs> Bet that's not a surprise to you. I studied theatre. I had a part-time job working in a call centre for a bank. And as part-time jobs go when you're a student, it was very well paid. It was like, I honestly felt like I had all the money in the world. I basically had a job and none of my flatmates had jobs. Um, but anyway, I didn't love the job. It was a terrible job. I hated it so much, but it was pretty good to have that cash. Anyway, graduated from my degree in theatre studies and I stepped out into the big old world and I was like, world, I am going to be an actress. And funnily enough, that didn't happen. So I, I'm really sad to say this, I, be, I went to work in the call centre full time and it was a really, really sad moment. It was super sad for me because I had all these dreams of being a star, being on the stage, being an actress. And here I was sat in the call centre and I remember the team that I was in, it was all people who had graduated and had done the exact same thing as me, had graduated, wanted to get a job in whatever field it was, wanted to get a graduate job or whatever, and had had to move to full time in the call centre. And uh, someone on my team even said, oh, look, it's a graduate graveyard. And that was a real moment that that broke my heart. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, what have I done? What have I done? Like, I can't do this anymore. So anyway, I worked in the call centre for a year after I graduated. And do you know what? If I hadn't worked in that call centre, I wouldn't have met Paul. That's how I met him. We both applied for the same job. We both applied for a job that was going to be off the phone. So it was like a management position. And the thing is, neither of us got it. And I have a sneaky suspicion why we didn't get it. Because the job in the bank, we were working in sales. And we were both really, really good at sales. Like I was one of the top performers in my team. And taking me off the phone would have had an impact on the sales quota. So they didn't take me off the phone, even though there were people who were being promoted into management who weren't as good at their job as what I was, but they were deemed more like dispensable. So that was really, really unfair. And then I remember the moment that I quit that job, right? I was meant to be going on holiday with Paul, right? So me and Paul met each other in the call centre. We started seeing each other. I was totally head over heels in love with them. Bear in mind, I was only 22. So my prefrontal cortex had not fully developed. So I wasn't really like the most professional in the world, but we were meant to be going on holiday together. And I had not asked for, I'd forgotten, like I think I'd asked for the time off, but I'd not asked for enough days, right? So I asked my manager, um, oh, I was like, oh, I've totally messed up. Like I've got these days off holiday, but I've I've forgotten one day. Can you extend my holiday? And she was like, no, I can't extend your holiday. Sorry. You know, it was like, sorry, it's above me. Like she she absolutely could have said, yes, Shona, I will sort that out. I'll go above and beyond because you're really good at what you do. And really, you're indispensable to the team. But no, she was just feeling like an asshole that day. And so I said, well, I quit. And I took off my headset and I sat down on the desk and I was like, I'll see you, never, goodbye. And I walked out and it felt so good and it felt absolutely terrifying as well. I remember my mum was so angry at me because I had to pay back a month's worth of wages. I'd just literally been paid. I didn't quite understand why I had to pay that back, but yeah, I'd just been paid and I had to pay that month worth back and I didn't have any money because I didn't have a job. But I was like, this is now going to force me to follow my dreams. And from that moment on, I started telling people I was an actress. I'm an actress. And I started sending my CV out to places and I started to message people and contact them asking for auditions because 
it was like a sink or swim type situation. Like if I didn't go for this, I would have no money. And my mom was not bailing me out of this situation anymore. <laughs> so the bottom line is, oh, I am obviously not an actress, but I had a good couple of years of great fun acting in plays, not earning very much money, having loads of fun, traveling all over the place, touring. And it was honestly such a fun couple of years. I then became a personal trainer. The point of the story is that it's so important to take a risk. If I had not just taken that headset off and thrown it on the desk and walked out, I think there is a strong possibility I could still be there. I think that quite often we rise to the occasion. There have been times in my life where I've had to adapt and overcome. I'm thinking about that time when I was like, I need to make this, I need to get a job, I need to find a way to make money. And another one of those times was during lockdown. I was working in Pure Gym. Within the space of a week, we were told that the gym was closing and we needed to go home and, you know, do whatever you needed to do. And within the space of 24 hours, I completely switched my business to online. I think about moments like that and I am so grateful for the fact that I'm a risk taker. I know that I have everything within me to make this work. I know that I will just keep finding solutions instead of keep looking at the problems. And Rosie, you are a risk taker and you are a solution finder and I'm going to give you a big old pat on the back. So well done. Anyway, let's move on to today's topic, choosing your niche. The absolute first step in business is knowing who your dream client is or what your niche is. I'm actually just going to use the phrase dream client or ideal client instead of niche because I, I actually don't really know what niche means. <laughs> but I do absolutely know who my ideal client is and my target market. Probably saying target market is a better phrase to use here. Now, I see so many coaches getting tripped up at this hurdle and it is what is causing you to feel like there's this huge disconnect in your business? Like if you don't have totally nailed down like an idea of your exact dream client, then there's going to be a disconnect between you and creating content. Like you're going to be sat there thinking, what do I post? I don't know what I'm posting because you don't know who you're creating content for and you don't know who you're trying to speak to. It can also mean that you're not enjoying your job because it feels like it's not really resonating with you. It feels like you don't really identify or empathize enough with your ideal client because they're just not exciting you. It's not something that you're particularly passionate about. So what I'm going to talk about first is give you some examples of mistakes that you might be making with your niche. And if any of these are sounding familiar, then first of all, I just want to say I have been there too. And a lot of my clients have been there too. And one of the first things that I do when I take on a new client, when someone starts working with me in a one-to-one -one partnership or even inside Unfucking Softball, my group coaching collective, is having a conversation with them, getting to know them as a person, as a human, and what makes them excited, what makes them tick, what their values are, and being able to, with them, talk about who their ideal client is. Because a lot of the time, I will say to someone, describe your ideal client, and they will get tripped up. Now, this should be something, if I say to you, describe your ideal client right now, in a couple of sentences, you should be able to just describe them like you know them inside out. Now, if you don't, don't worry. I'm going to give you some tips on how we can find that person by the end of this podcast. So some common mistakes that people make with niche are thinking that they don't need to have one. <laughs> now, if you think, oh, I'm scared of niching down because it means that I'm closing off a lot of people, that is a really misguided way of thinking. Because if you imagine that you are making content, like say you've got a thousand followers, right? And you're making content 
and it's really broad and it's not resonating with anyone, then no one is going to be messaging you or contacting you or, you know, responding to your call to action saying, oh, this sounds exactly like me. Oh my God, you're inside my head. Because your niche is far too broad and it's not resonating with anyone. Whereas if you have a thousand people that follow you and you're speaking really directly to even 5% of those people and getting inside their heads, then that is you making tons of money if all of those people contacted you off the back of that type of content. So please don't think that if you niche down, you'll be closing people off. In fact, the opposite will happen. If you niche down, you'll be speaking more directly to people that need your help. So obviously not having a niche, we're just going to discount that. You are going to have a niche. The next mistake is that your niche is too broad. And I'm talking about the people who say that they work with busy mums. Now, if the beginning, middle and end of your niche is busy mums, then inside your target market is Michelle Obama, Katie Price, me. (laughs) Now, those are three very, very different women who have very, very different problems and different values. And I'm going to imagine that one of those people are going to be very difficult to work with. Yeah, Michelle. Did you hear Katie Price on Louis Theroux's podcast? I actually thought she came across as really likeable and really lovable. I would recommend that you listen to it because she has had a tough old life, but she's still got a great sense of humour. Anyway, in order to speak to your dream client's soul, in order for them to feel like, oh my God, she is inside your head, then you need to know more about your ideal client beyond their gender, their family status and schedule. Because busy mums are such a broad, like I have not met a mum who is like, oh yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I've got loads of time. Yeah, like I, I'm actually kind of, bored I need some more things to do (laughs) every single mum that I know is busy so if you're someone who has I work with busy mums I help busy mums with fat loss I'm gonna say that that is not niche enough like that is not specific enough now what is it that you help those busy mums with what is it that connects those busy mums together? What are what are they all struggling with? What is a similar problem that they have? Or what is a similar value that they have? Are they mums who have grown up with diet culture and are really struggling with yo-yo dieting? Are they mums who are also really driven type A career women who want to be the perfect mum, but also want to have the perfect body, but also want to be really... Um, excel in their career and are struggling to juggle it all like see when I describe those two types of people those are much more tangible and I bet you have someone in your friend group that you're like oh yeah that sounds that sounds quite like her on the other end of the spectrum is your niche too narrow or too specific so for example if you are extremely passionate about a very specific area of expertise So your chosen niche is gluten intolerant women born on a Tuesday with a passion for horse riding. That's going to leave you with in the total population of the United Kingdom, probably about five clients to work with. And it's going to make it really, really difficult for you to pick up clients because so many people are going to be like, oh, that's not me. So make sure that your niche isn't a unicorn niche or make sure that your niche isn't some type of niche that you've made up as well like women who are six weeks postpartum who love to climb mountains but I don't know if they they exist who's going to be six weeks postpartum and wants to climb a mountain like maybe you did but like this needs to be an actual person that exists that has a problem that needs to be solved another mistake that you might be making with your niche is choosing something based on a trend or something that has very recently become popular and might also in the near future become quite unpopular and an example I'm thinking of is High Rocks. Now High Rocks is super super popular but I had not heard of it. I don't know when it started but like five years ago I had not heard of it and then 
all of a sudden it just like burst onto the scene. If you don't know what High Rocks is, where have you been? High Rocks is basically like a, a fitness competition and people like really love it and they want to train for it and they become really obsessed with it. Very, very similar to CrossFit. But in my opinion, having been through, like I, I started CrossFit back in 2013, I have seen CrossFit get really, really popular and now I'm seeing CrossFit not so popular. So the chances are that perhaps something like High Rocks, something similar will happen to that too. So I would probably say that niching down so that you're connected to something that could potentially die a death in a good couple of years, I would be quite wary of that. And I, I even see it like on TikTok, there are coaches who help people specifically sell on TikTok, sell coaching on TikTok. Now, the algorithm could change on TikTok. The trends could change completely. And I'm thinking that it's not going to be a place where you can actually sell coaching because TikTok doesn't feel like a platform for people like me, to be completely honest, selling any type of coaching. So in my opinion, I have just steered clear from TikTok. And I've noticed that all these TikTok coaches are suddenly not TikTok coaches anymore because they've connected themselves to something that feels quite fragile and, you know, isn't working anymore. Next mistake is choosing a niche that maybe don't have the financial means to invest in what you do. And I absolutely felt this when I was a pre and post natal coach because when someone is on their maternity leave they might not have access to the funds the disposable income that they normally have to invest in a coach and that totally makes sense like unfortunately is a truth that they've got a baby coming, they're going to be spending their money on all the stuff that they need to have a baby. Maybe their priorities are kind of shifted as well. Like we see the value in exercising all the way through your pregnancy. We see how important it is to be fit and healthy throughout pregnancy and early postpartum, but maybe they don't think it's important right now. Maybe they think, right, well, it was important before I got pregnant. It's going to be important a couple of years after I have my baby. But right now, I am too busy to think about this. And unfortunately, I wish that wasn't the case because when I was a pre and postnatal coach, I really didn't want that to be the case. But you might find that, that it, is, it is difficult to ask people to invest high ticket prices in what you do when they're in a certain stage of their life. And it, it isn't just people that are pre and postnatal. There's lots of different groups of people that might just not be in a position to invest in themselves right now. So have a think right now, is my niche someone who sees the value in changing their life, sees the value in investing in the coach? They might not. And so therefore, you are going to be making this more difficult for yourself than you need to. So we're going to take a quick break because if you're listening, I'm guessing that you are wanting to make some big changes in your business. Maybe you're hitting that income ceiling. You're working mornings, evenings and weekends and spending far too much of your free time stressing about your business. I get it. I've been right there with you, exhausted by my business and thinking that the only way to earn more is to work more, which is your idea of hell right now considering how close you already are to burnout. This is exactly why I created the Liberation Lounge. It's a membership community for business owners like you who want to build a successful and profitable business on your terms. Inside the lounge, we're all about ditching the hustle mentality and creating real freedom. The freedom to work the hours that you choose. The liberation that comes with complete financial security. The knowledge of how to keep increasing it. And most of all, the confidence to push past your current limits and into new territories of income and impact. You'll learn how to take your business beyond the one way that people can work with you right now 
and start building the foundations that allow you to make money while you're walking the dog, on date night with your partner, or cuddled up on the sofa watching Disney movies with your toddler. And I'll be there to guide you all the way. Just like so many clients that I've worked with to help them double and even triple their income while working less. Inside the lounge, you'll get live check-in sessions with me, monthly masterclasses on sales, mindset, and marketing strategies, social media prompts and scripts to turn your socials into a selling machine, instant access to the Freedom Formula course, full of video trainings to help you get your first five to 10 online clients. Plus access to an incredible, cozy and close-knit community of business owners who are on the exact same journey as you. Sounds delightful, don't you think? And because you're one of my special She Is The Moment podcast listeners, I have an exclusive discount just for you. If you use the code She Is The Moment at checkout, you'll get your first month half price. Now, this is only for my amazing podcast listeners as a thank you for your support and loyalty. And I'm not gonna be sharing this discount code anywhere else. So if you're ready to break free from the grind and build a business that supports your dream lifestyle, click the link in the show notes and I'll see you inside the Liberation Lounge. I can't wait to see you there. Okay, I've got two more mistakes that you might be making with your niche. Not understanding your ideal client's problems and desires. Now, this is going to be a whole another episode of the podcast, but conducting market research is so, so important. I conduct market research very regularly, like not just at the start of, you know, launching a business or launching a new offer. Like every few months, I will be asking and collating and collecting information that I can use so that I make sure that I'm talking so directly to my ideal client. I know exactly what it is they're struggling with. I know exactly what it is that's holding them back. I know the problems that they don't even realize that they're having. I know what they want more than anything else. And finally, I know the language that they use to describe all of that. The only way that you're going to learn all of that is by conducting market research. And so many people make loads of market research mistakes, which I'll be going into perhaps in another episode of the podcast. But if you don't understand your niches, problems, what makes them tick, the language that they use, then you're going to have a huge disconnect between speaking to your ideal client and actually getting them signed up because they're like, mm, this doesn't, this doesn't sound like something I'd say or this isn't actually a problem I'm having. So make sure that you know all of that stuff. Make sure that you understand them. And in a similar note, and this is something that I really, really experienced and a lot of my clients experience is not actually resonating with your ideal client. So I've sp spoken about this in a podcast before, but I had a client who was given a niche by her old business coach, which is a terrible idea. No one, no one else should ever choose your niche for you. And her niche that she was given was shift workers. She did not resonate with your average shift worker. And when she was at work, because she was also a shift worker, looking around at her colleagues, yes, she really liked them, but she was like, I am not like you. I am very different from you. I just happen to be a shift worker. And the thing is with her is that she didn't resonate with her chosen niche with shift workers because she was someone who would go above and beyond. She would always prep her meals. She would always do things that were hard. She ha she is the most disciplined person that you've ever met. Whereas the people that she would on shift with were like eating absolute crap. They were like not being their own best friends or being their own worst enemies. And she found that when she was working with those people, they were really hard to get them on side because they had so many problems. They had so many um, excuses and it just wasn't fun for her to deal with. And I even felt this too. When I was a pre and post nasal coach, I kind of fell into it because I was working for another coach at the time. I fell pregnant. I wanted to make sure that I was doing 
perfectly safe exercise during my own pregnancy. So I did a couple of pre and postnatal qualifications. <laughs> and the coach I was working for was like, that's great. You've now got these qualifications. You will become my pre and postnatal coach, which is fair enough. Like I was putting that to good use. But I enjoyed talking about that stuff until I didn't enjoy talking about it. And I think it was the point where everyone, every, I don't want to speak so broadly, but I would say most mothers go through this matrescence, right? Which is when, kind of like adolescence, you have your baby and it's like you're born again. Like you are suddenly this new identity as a mother. And it's not just, oh, like this extra identity. It becomes your whole entire identity. And yeah, that was cool at one point, like, my entire brain space was taken up with breastfeeding. <laughs> it was my entire personality at one point. All I could think about was my baby. All I could think about was motherhood. All I could think about was my pelvic floor. And it then was like all I talked about on social media because that was who I was talking to. And then it was all I talked about with my clients. And then all of a sudden, my baby got to an age where I was like, okay, I'm ready to find Shona again. I'm a mum, but I'm also Shona. And I found myself again. And then I was like, I don't really want to talk about this anymore. I don't want to talk about my pelvic floor. I don't want to talk about breastfeeding. I don't want to talk about sleepless nights. I've left that behind. And so then I pivoted. I was a pre and postnatal coach and I pivoted to becoming a confidence coach. I loved helping people be more confident. Now, what is quite interesting about that is that my ideal clients were kind of the same. Like I was still working with a lot of mums. I was still working with people who wanted to be strong. I was still help working with people who wanted to eat healthier. But I was helping them be more confident. I wasn't just speaking to mums. I was speaking to people who wanted to be more confident. And that was the problem that I was solving. So previously... The problem that I was solving was that I was helping people recover postpartum. I was helping people be strong and fit throughout pregnancy. But then the problem I solved was I was helping people be confident. I was helping people find body confidence, be confident in work, be confident enough to start a business. And then from there, I became a business coach. And it's really freeing and lovely to notice how these shifts in my niche have led me to here and I actually when I first started this business as a business coach my business name was the mommy business coach because I had been a online coach who became a mum and made a lot of mistakes if you've listened to episode one uh, you'll know all the mistakes I've made. If you've not listened to episode one, go back and listen to episode one. But basically, a Spartan Oats version is that I had been running my business like someone who wasn't a mum and it led me to being burnt out and overwhelmed. So I started this business so that I could help mums like me who were also business owners run their business in a way that suited them and put their life first and their priorities and values first. So that was great. Like I found it really great to speak to these mums and help these mums and it was fabulous but what I then found was I was just making the same mistake that I'd made when I was a pre and postnatal coach I was making mum my entire identity but I was just adding like you know the business coach frame so then I pivoted from being a business coach for mums to being a life first business coach and what you can see here is that as soon as I did that, I kept my old clients, but I also opened myself up to new clients who had similar values to my mum clients. So previously, the only people that would work with me were, that were mums. And I remember the moment that I rebranded from the mummy business coach to unapologetically Shona. And I rebranded my signature mastermind which is now my group coaching collective it was called the mummy business makeover I rebranded it to unfucking stoppable I had someone sign up literally on the day because she was like oh I've always loved your content but I've never felt like you were for me because I'm not a mum but I kind of loved it because I really want to have a life I want to be someone who is able to travel around 
and still run a business from my laptop. Like I, I want that freedom and flexibility. So you can see how important it is to make sure that your niche is more value driven. Like my, the values that I run my business are freedom, flexibility and fun, right? So if I'm not having fun, then I'm not feeling free and flexible. So all of these things totally interlink together. And so my business runs in those values. My ideal client has those exact values too. And if you work with me, chances are you work with me because you also have a very similar sense of humor to me, but you also absolutely prioritize your family, your freedom, your flexibility. So moving on, if you've been listening to this and you're thinking, oh my God, Shona, I am making a lot of mistakes with my niche. I'm feeling totally like there's a big disconnect between me and my ideal client I'm finding them annoying (laughs) they irritate me I'm not resonating with them they're not resonating with me then we need to make a change and it's absolutely grand to do that by the way like there's nothing more freeing than just being like right okay I'm making a change I'm rebranding I'm speaking to a whole new person because that is so important. It's also just fun to do, right? So in order to find this, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Now, get ready to write these down because these are journal prompts. These are questions that it's going to take you a couple of minutes to to answer, right? Maybe a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days. What feels easy for you that doesn't feel easy for others? Now, I bet there's a lot of things going on in your head right now. And when I think about what feels easy for me right now, I'm a, I'm a very confident person. I can stand up and I can talk and I can put myself out there. That all feels easy, right? But other things that feel easy for me are taking risks or challenging myself or putting myself in my co- outside my comfort zone. Those are all things that I help people with every single day. Because if they're not doing those things, they're staying stuck where they are. They're making big, scary life decisions, starting their business, putting themselves out there, changing niche, speaking to their ideal client, selling on social media. All of these things are scary and I help them do that, right? So these are things that feel easy for me, but they don't naturally come as easy to other people. So I help them with that. And it was really easy when I asked myself that question. I was like, oh right okay and this is a question that I asked my client Heather when she was thinking of creating a new offer right so she wanted to create a new low ticket offer and I asked her what feels easy for you that doesn't feel easy for others and she said I'm a really disciplined person and she is she gets up at 5 a.m to train before her kids get up every day she will always meal prep like she doesn't have an issue with doing the things that need to be done whereas Discipline is something that so many people find hard, right? So based off that, she started speaking to someone or speaking to an ideal client who was struggling with that and she was embodying what they wanted. And ever since she started doing that, she's found that people come come so easily to her because she's like, I know you're struggling with this. I will help you become this, like, you can't be disciplined, I will help you become disciplined. Because we all know that if someone wants to lose weight, build strength, feel better about themselves, it is the combination of doing the thing every single day until it happens. That's discipline. There we go. Okay, next question. If you're struggling with the first one, what are you often complimented on? And don't you dare say to me, I'm not complimented. I bet you are. And if you're not complimented, Send me a message and I'll get to know you and I will tell you what you're naturally good at. So something that I'm often complimented on is my beautiful smile. No, I'm joking. Again, it's it's my ability to just stand up and talk and be confident. I also am often complimented on the fact that I make people feel safe. Like that's that's a lovely thing. I remember the first time someone said that to me, you make me feel safe. I was like, oh, that's really lovely. But I think that's just from, you know, being a personal trainer and and meeting people for the first time in a scary environment like the gym for, you know, 12 years. 
that has taught me how to make people feel safe and comfortable from the very first moment. And then the third question I want you to ask yourself, right? And this is so, so important because it doesn't matter what the answers to number one and two are unless the answer to number three is yes, right? See this thing that you're thinking about? Could you talk about this all day until the cows come home? Because unless the answer is yes, you will very soon get bored of talking about it. Now, I used to be a fat loss coach and I cannot talk about fat loss all day long. (laughs) And the reason I can't talk about fat loss all day long is because it's something that I'm just not that interested in. It's something that I don't particularly feel excited or passionate about. I have helped a lot of people lose fat, but I don't feel like it's like a make or break thing for me. Please don't judge me for this, right? But at one point I was a fat loss coach answering fat loss check-ins and questions 20 times a day. And honestly, by about the fifth fat loss answer, like I was losing my mind because I was just so bored of it. Like I did not find it exciting to talk about. However, if you asked me the same questions about pelvic floor, I could talk about pelvic floor all day. I actually don't anymore, but there was at one point of my life where I was talking about pelvic floor all day long. And even to the point where like, if I was at like a party and this did happen and I mentioned uh, pelvic floor, like someone say, what do you do? Oh, I'm a pre and postnatal coach, and, but I also help people with their pelvic floor and blah, blah, blah. And they would tell me about their pelvic floor and I would end up talking to them for an hour about pelvic floor. I, even, I would like learn all about their poo habits and I'd be telling to get a squatty potty and all that stuff because I was just like, it was like just a hyper-focused topic for me. So could you talk about this all day long? And if the answer is no, then it's not the niche for you. It really needs to feel like it is something that lights your fire. The easiest way to feel like an employee in your own business is by feeling like you're just going through the motions. As soon as that happens, you know that it's time to make a change. Thing is, right, there's no such thing as making mistakes in business. The only time you've failed or made a mistake is if you give up. I think that if you're thinking, oh my God, like I've got the wrong niche, this isn't right. This is such a great opportunity for a rebrand. I love a rebrand. I love helping people have a rebrand. It's a really exciting time. And when you have a rebrand, you will have people sign up because you're excited, you're passionate. That is infectious. They'll be like, oh, I just, I can't get enough of this. I love how excited she is. This is great. They can get all caught up in that hype. Every time I've had a rebrand, I have had people sign up because they're like, wow, Shona's suddenly here. She's great. She's full of energy and she's here just for me. I want you to know that if you are struggling with this, you are not alone. And I regularly have conversations with clients. They are wanting help with this specific problem. Like I've had people sign up to work with me one-to-one because they're like, Shona, my niche isn't right. Or my ideal client, I don't know who it is I'm talking to, or I really resent them. It's not their fault. It's my fault for choosing their own niche. I need to do something about it. And honestly, within days, within a few hours of us getting to know each other, they've chosen a brand new niche, an ideal client that's perfect for them. There's loads of people, loads of fish in that particular pond that they're fishing in and they are buzzing and ready to go. And it transforms their life because they love their business now. There's tons more clients. They're able to charge higher prices. They're able to create offers that are so exciting that are going to completely transform people's lives. And it makes their business feel not like work. Let's move on to membership question of the week. Okay. It's from Becca. Pondering. Full stop. New paragraph. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's a bit dramatic. Pondering. Full stop you paragraph. My membership is a you can join within a short window each month, but I'm wondering, would it be better as an evergreen? Now, I responded to that saying, I personally think evergreen works better for memberships because it's low ticket. You don't have to do a big launch. With a membership, chances are it's a small 
transformation. Like it's a low ticket offer. So you're not offering the world. It's a really simple transformation. It gets people from A to B. You don't need to do a big launch. You don't need to give people time to get their head around it. It's something that works really well to add people in all the time, just any time of the month. Like I have a membership, obviously the Liberation Lounge, and I'll talk about it all throughout the month because people can join any time of the month. That's the beauty of it. I love having a membership. So I asked her to tell me a bit about it. She said, I've been running a membership for a few years. I have 18 women currently. It's called Fire and it's for women to really ignite the flame within. I love that. I love that it's called Fire. I would join something called Fire. I want to be in a membership called Fire. It helps them get stronger, feel more confident in their bodies and in themselves. I used to do live coaching sessions, but people just weren't showing up. So I started a short private podcast for them. I think a private podcast works so much better because thing is like people don't expect to be coached live in a membership like I would save that type of service for your higher ticket options and there's also just not enough skin in the game for a lot of people to turn up to like several live coaching sessions because they've not really invested enough money and you don't want to be like competing with your other offers because like if someone's like I want to be coached live by Becca oh I can just do it in this whatever 40 pound a month program why would I sign up for the 200 pound program I'm just gonna sign up for this one you don't want people to be like that to be competing with your offers so they get a lush community a banging playlist check-ins to help them give themselves praise and plan for the week ahead weekly live yoga they might do it pre-recorded toying with that again this sounds like a lot for a membership like this is basically a group program and I would look at potentially Becca Let's have a chat. Let's have a chat after this podcast. I usually let clients join at the end of a month to start the next, but not really getting them numbers. So not sure why I just don't keep it open. So Becca, what I would do is I would open the doors all days of the month, like let people join whenever, make it evergreen. I would also take a step backwards, zoom out a little bit and think about your business goals for this month. And what I get all my clients to do is set income goals so if you've got like several different offers say you've got one-to-one you've got a group program you've got a membership I like to set a goal of how many clients I need inside each of those offers per month in order to hit those income goals so is it like I need 10 inside the membership I need one new one-to-one client and I want three inside my group program great cool so then you can zoom out a little bit further and be like right I've got a month I am going to talk about my membership for this couple of weeks. I'm going to talk about my group program for this couple of weeks. And I'm going to sprinkle in a few posts about one-to-one here and there. Now, what you can do, and I do this very often, is a double call to action on my posts. So imagine I was making a post about this particular podcast topic. So choosing your niche. Now, Inside the Liberation Lounge, there is a whole video training about choosing your ideal client. I have just simply scratched the surface of it inside this podcast, but there's a whole video training inside there. So I could create a post and then the call to action is inside the Liberation Lounge, there is a whole video training on how to choose your ideal client that sets your world on fire, loves everything you do and has your shared values. If you want to join Liberation Lounge, then jump in and you can get instant access to that training. Or if you want more hand-holding, more one-to-one support so that we can get to know each other inside out and help discover who your ideal client is based on your values and quality skills, then we need to work together one-to-one. So I could talk about two of my different offers from the same piece of content. And Becca, there's no reason why you can't do that too. So if someone wants a new strength training program and they want a part to be a part of community, well, that's great. Then my membership is for you. Or if you want personalized nutrition plan, if you want a bespoke training plan, if you want someone to help you with the mindset problems that you're having that are holding you back, then my one-to-one coaching is for you. So you can see how those are 
the same niche. Like, so if I think about my niche, right, going back to the topic that we're talking about, my niche is online coaches who value freedom and flexibility. But within each of my different offers, my niche is then broken down into three different types of people who are at different stages of their journey. Now, this is a whole nother podcast all about fleshing out your product suite and how important it is to have a different product suite but we will get into that another day because I've been talking for an hour now. So I think that draws us to the end of this podcast. I hope you have enjoyed listening to it and got loads from it. If you ever want to ask me a question or reach out or you want me to discuss something in particular on the podcast then you can email she is the moment at gmail.com or you can contact me on Instagram at unapologetically Shona. As usual, please, please, please subscribe, follow, rate five stars. Really appreciate it. And if you've enjoyed it, share it to your stories as well or send it to a friend. Love you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.